Okay, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 quickly. Hebrews chapter 11, before I begin to build gradually. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read verse 6. That's my verse of emphasis. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God. That, that other statement doesn't apply to everybody. It only applies to those that want to come to God. If you want to come to God, that, is, that means you want to deal with God. Only people that intend to deal with God get to see the dynamics of God in their space. I've seen so many people trying to book counseling times, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if my experience in counseling ministry means anything, 70% of the people that come for counseling, what they are hoping to meet is a superstar, someone that has a plug, the plug from heaven. He can regulate things and make things happen at the spur of the moment. Now, most of them are not coming because they want to participate with heaven. No, they are not planning to come to God. They believe that they have tried so well by coming to a man. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, if you have seen the spirit of the teaching that we have been doing since we started this platform, We've been equipping people so that they will have capacity to do it themselves. God is free to all. God is, is, is merciful to all. It's not an attempt to create superstars that people will need to come and know. They, yes, if you have the opportunity to come, why not? And I'm not saying that the fact that you are strong doesn't, is revealed in the fact that you are alone and you don't interact with other people. No. I'm just giving you a record of my stewardship in the area of counseling. Most of the people that come are not planning to do any business with God, but they are hoping to benefit from your own allocation with God. As good as that is, and as much as possible as we meet with people, we try to bring service to them by the Holy Ghost. The purpose of God is not that you depend upon a man. The purpose of God is that you will establish your own altar and you will do business with God. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, He that cometh to God. There are a few rules that apply just in case you want to come to God and those rules only apply to those that come to God. The fact that you are in a conference now, listening to how altars are, you know, why it is necessary for you to have an altar and to function in the life of the tent and the altar, doesn't mean that you will go back and apply the things that you are learning. Because not every man is willing to come to God. You are never going to see the supernatural in your space, God coming to swallow up your insufficiency and put you on a pedestal where Satan will not be able to reach you if you refuse to come to God. Meanwhile, just in case you have an intention to come to God, there are two rules that apply. First rule is faith. First rule is faith. And the reason why the first rule is faith is because you are going to do business with the intangible. If you are doing business with the intangible, doing business with the invincible, you cannot do it outside of faith. Those, those are our relatives that manage altars for Satan. You need to know how powerful their faith is. Are you there? Huh. They believe that thing. They believe it. They believe it. Once you want to do business with the invincible realm, 
you cannot succeed if you are not willing to believe in the entity that, that governs that space. You'll be confronted with a rude requirement if you want to deal with God. And the rude requirement is faith in the invincible. Faith in the intangible. Faith in such things that your, your physical senses cannot verify. If you are not ready for that kind of adventure, there is no need for you to deal with God. Because the primary requirement for such pilgrimage is faith. Do you realize why faith is a basic, in fact, is a way of life of the believer? You know, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. This corrupt world of ours is not a good place for a just man. In fact, a just man is going to suffer backlash just because he holds his ground. And God is aware of the, the partiality. That the pendulum is likely going to tilt in the direction of a man that is unjust. Because of that, he decided to help us by creating a way for just people to survive. And he called it faith. He that cometh to God must believe faith. Faith becomes the key. So when, <laughs> are you there? You are there. All right, so when you now come and you, we say, okay, we are going to go on 91 days prayer. And then you get excited and you join the prayer. And you pray for 45 days and it seems nothing is happening. The reason why it occurred to you that nothing was happening was because demons have started playing with your mind. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm an experienced man in this matter. By God's mercy, I have authority in the issues that I am talking to you about. You know, one time Paul says, I speak as a man that has received mercy of the Lord to be trustworthy. He's talking about the authority has gathered by reason of his spiritual experience. On the matters that I speak of, I have gathered experience that makes me an authority in this field. And I do not say that boastfully. I say that in the spirit of Apostle Paul. On the 45th day, you felt as if nothing was happening. The reason why it occurred to you, that's your sense of evaluation. The reason why it occurred to you was because Satan is trying to sway you away from that requirement. He that cometh to God must believe. If you have never seen how doing business with the invincible realm produces result, if you have never seen it before, Satan will ensure that you will never see it by swaying you away from this number one requirement so that you become fed up of continuing. You know, I told you, in this field, I have authority. And I did not know why a certain fast that I did, I, I was at liberty to, to be marking the calendar. When I finished one day, I mark. So I have, I took inventory of how long it took before God responded to me so that I can teach somebody tomorrow. There are many things I did like research. So I have time. I have dates. I have all those particulars to help you understand the protocol that we're about to engage in. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. You just remembered. Meanwhile, the parameters with which you were using to judge whether your initiative was effective were physical parameters. So the devil will always want to bring you back into the realm of sight and the realm of senses. But he that comes to God must be ready to do business on the strength 
of his faith because he wants to transact with intangible things that his physical senses cannot verify. So please help me ask your neighbor, are you ready to transact with the invincible? When witches cast a spell in the night, it is most likely that early in the morning they will come to check if it worked. It, it means they believed what they did. Is the effect, oh my. Are you, are you still following what I'm talking about? Now this is a complete, complete module. The third week, in the third week of this teaching, I will show you how your own altar can swallow another altar. I will show you. The, it's in the Bible. It's, it's in the Bible. Those days, I used to study the Bible in a hurry. But now, I discovered, when I rush, I don't see. Everything is in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. Are you still there? Yes, sir. So, you say, he that cometh to God must believe. Must have faith. I found out that witches have more faith than we do. Yes, most times. Witches are very dogged, they are very faithful, they are very consistent, and the reason why they are consistent is because they believe. You cannot maintain any form of consistency. Sister, you with cap, you are the one I'm talking about. You can't maintain consistency. Mm, mm, mm. You can't. You can't. If it rains, you will say, oh, there's an imbalance, there's an imbalance. Then you, you forget your commitment. Is because you don't, you are not ready to walk with the invincible. I went to preach somewhere in Western Nigeria, and when I got there, the minister that ministered before me, who happens to be, I think, this last surviving disciple of Apostle. Babalola, that, that learned their ways of prayer. Last, the last of them. So he ministered before me, and uh, they told him that I'm, I'm the next minister. So we got into town, went straight to our lodging, to rest and all of that. He sent the pastor to call me. And he wants to, he wants to see that man. Meanwhile, the person I'm talking about doesn't have physical eyes. But he said, he wants to see that man. So... We rush there. And you will know that this man has another eye. Hey. The man has another eye. He doesn't need physical eyes. That's a man that has done business with the supernatural realm for long. The sight he received in the spirit was a very powerful replacement for his physical eye. Oh, you are not with me. Oh, you believe that is not in the Bible? Oh, come with me. Let me show you a scripture. Give me Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3. Because I want to know how many of us are, are really ready to do business with the invisible. Because when you want to do business with the invisible, you don't look at the cloud or the wind. No, we don't look at physical. No, no, no. The way results come from spiritual transaction is not according to the progressions that is suggestive of such a manifestation in the natural. It was Elisha that told them, he said, dig ditches. You may not see cloud and you may not see rain, but the ditches shall be filled with water. It, it only men that do business with the intangible can make such statements. This is Isaiah chapter 11, and I know you know Isaiah chapter 11. The subject of Isaiah chapter 11 is the grace that is on the Messiah. If you read Isaiah chapter 11 very, very carefully, you will find out that Isaiah 11 is pointing to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Just take time and read it. You will come to the same conclusion. Now, this is the anointing that will operate on the Messiah. 
I left verse 1 and verse 2 because my interest is verse 3. Ah, go to verse 1. If we can't talk about verse 3 without verse 1. He said, There shall come forth a root out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall go grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord. Have you seen it? Go to verse 3 now. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This Spirit of the Lord that shall rest upon him shall make him quick, of quick understanding in the fear of God, such that he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. If you have an electronic Bible, click on quick understanding. It's, it's one word in the Hebrew. It's called ruach. Have you confirmed it? Ruach. What's the meaning of ruach? Breath. Have you seen it? Any confirmation there? Oh, no confirmation. It means we don't have an electronic, nobody has an electronic Bible to confirm it. I, I want you to, I, I don't want you to think that I'm making up things. Anybody with a Bible, an electronic Bible that's equipped with a lexicon? Yeah, so have you confirmed that it's rock? It's rock. He shall make thee of ruach understanding. So there's an understanding that comes through ruach, through the breath of God. And that understanding is superior to the sight of your eyes. It can be a replacement for sight. It can be a replacement for hearing. Because the man I saw, he was without physical eyes, but the man could see me. I saw the, you know me, I see in scripture. So I saw this scripture fulfilled before my face. Meanwhile, that's a man that fake pastors in his city are afraid to see him. Because when you, when you come to him, he will say you are fake and he will, he will tell you, if you visit again, I'll curse you. Yes. So fake pastors don't come close to him. He was the one that sent for me. I didn't, I didn't, we were sleeping. He told me the prayer point that was on my heart. <laughs> he, he picked the prayer point and told me he, that God has answered this thing that you've been. Ruach. That when the breath of God hits your regenerated spirit, are you there? You are not here. Okay, this is Jesus in the book of John chapter 3. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, that's verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This was Jesus' explanation for what it meant to be born again. This was the opportunity Jesus had to define what it meant to be born again. Instead of definition, he gave an illustration. Jesus will always dodge definitions. He did definition only one time. It's Apostle Paul that, that deals in definitions. But Jesus will escape it. He says, except a man be born again. This is Jesus' description of what it means to be born again. And his description of what it means to be born again is experiential and not definitive. Except a man be born again, are you there? He cannot see the kingdom of God. It means that the proof that the Holy Ghost is indwelling your heart is that he gives you perception of what is obtainable in the realm of God. For your information, the Greek word for see is idol. And idol means to perceive by reason of the use of senses. 
Do you still remember when you were in the womb at nine months, you had eyes, but the eyes were not meant for the womb. So that you couldn't see in the womb. Is that true? You had ears when you were nine months, fully developed. But the ears were not active in the womb because they were not designed for the womb. You had to be born first before your eyes became relevant. You had to be born first before your ears became relevant. And Jesus is saying, when you are now born again, there are spiritual senses built into your spirit. But you need to be born again in order for those senses to become relevant. That's what the word, the, the Greek word idol means. You need to be born into the realm of the Lord. Born into the realm of God. And when the spirit of God breathes upon your spirit man, what it produces is that perception now begins to come of the realm of God. That's why the word there was ruach. So when, when the Holy Ghost comes to indwell your regenerated human spirit, it comes with perception. Do you, you understand that? That perception is what I'm saying can be a very powerful replacement for the sight of your eyes and for the hearing of your ears. For he shall make him of ruach understanding in the fear of God and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes nor the hearing of his ears. If you are going to do business with the realm of God, you your navigating system will be ruach, will be that perception that comes from the Holy Ghost because your physical senses are no longer valuable for such transaction. Oi, you're not following me. You will use your spiritual perceptions as the organ of sensing when you are traveling in the realm of the spirit. He that cometh to God, he must believe. He must believe. The stepping stone into those possibilities is called fate. Are you there? Now, I, I, as we come into the practical aspect of this matter, I would have loved to give us... Okay, today is Friday. Ah, thank God. I'll do it tomorrow. I will show you what Roark does. There are eight forms of perception that you can receive through your spiritual senses. So we'll do a brief refresher course on those matters. Because when you begin to trouble the spirit realm, trouble the realm, there will be feedback from the realm. And the feedback will come in, term, in, in form of perceptions. Perceptions that you secure on your spirit man. If I don't teach you about perceptions, about the use of your receptacle, then this lecture is in vain. When you begin to knock on the door of heaven, heaven is going to respond. But they will not respond in your natural language. Jesus was the one that says the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So there are, are words that are valid words, but yet those words are spirit. They are spirit words. And there are eight kinds of spirit words that you must be acquainted to, with because that is how the feedback of all your interactions will take place. So if you want to evaluate your, your pilgrimage in the spirit, you don't eval evaluate it with a proof in the natural. We evaluate it with feedback. Feedback that comes through Ruach. Are you there? If you know what I'm talking about, you can see danger before it comes. You will know that, ah, I need to take a journey of fasting because of your perception. You are not a strong man around the altar if you don't know how God responds when you make an effort to secure his attention. So what we are talking about here is that we have left the realm of the natural and the instrument with which we are using to navigate is called faith because we are dealing with the realm of the intangible. We are dealing with the realm of the invincible. And there's a way that invincible realm 
registers his wisdom upon the spirit of men. So tomorrow we are going to do that refresher course so that we can know what to expect when God begins to descend on your tarmac. Hallelujah.